Hi guys, today I've decided to run a special series on this space which is about books that I pick from my own private collection. Now, uh, these are not books that have been on the bestsellers list, these are not books that have gone viral, but these are books from the world of arts publishing. They're equally significant here because each of them have a very significant story to tell about our country, about the evolution of India's art scene. And the book that I've picked today is of a very interesting personality, India's first woman photo journalist who had been documenting the history of India's independence right through the early independent years right through different prime ministers of our country up to the late or the mid 90s perhaps. The title of the book is India in Focus Camera Chronicles of Homai Vyarwala. Now this has been written by Sabina Gadehok and uh, published by Maypin in India. It uh, talks about her journey in life of how it was belonging to a Parsi family. She studied in the JJ School of Arts but then took up photography as a profession. At a time it was uh, literally unheard of and especially if you're getting into photography which is into hardcore news as well and being a photojournalist. So she started work in the 1940s. She worked for the Illustrated Weekly, did a lot of features of how life was in Bombay, in India. Now this is a very significant photograph taken by her. This is of the victory parade uh, by the Allied forces in India and this is a victory parade that took place uh, at the center, the heart of New Delhi in Cannot Place, uh, marking the end of the Second World War in 1945. Of course, because um, be because India's independence movement and the, the eventual independence has been a, a prime part of her photojournalism career, it does have plenty, her collection does have plenty photographs of the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, and uh, all the occasions and events that led up to his uh, first few years in office uh, when she was specifically asked what is that incident that you missed covering missed reporting and missed being present in your career she had in an interview immediately answered uh, it was uh, the assassination of Gandhiji but of course as far as uh, his uh, last and final journey his funeral procession incidents that were observed across the country Homai Vyarwala was there with a the camera capturing the absolute tragedy that the nation had faced in a huge never before seen outpour of emotion out on the roads where everyone everyone was out on the streets well she did describe the years of the emergency under Prime Minister Indira Gandhi as one of the toughest years that she had seen in her career uh, but uh, as a, a press photographer uh, she was not just uh, impaneled and accredited even by if you see this uh, by the press information bureau of the government of India which was uh, valid up to 1995 so that is a really really long career that we're looking at but she also was worked as a stringer for various publications across uh, the United States and the United Kingdom as you can see in uh, various of her press cards that she has here. And uh, living in Delhi, being based in Delhi uh, during her active years of her career, she of course has photographed a, a lot of Delhi life, a lot of social life, a lot of historical aspects of the city here. And you see some really uh, unique pictures of the capital city at the time. As you can see uh, how the pearl necklace cannot place looked, uh, the Purana Qila, uh, the settlements outside Jama Masjid, Jantar Mantar, which has been photographed so beautifully by her here. It's important to remember that her journey has uh, also been uncharted for its times, where she herself says that she had no clue that she wanted to be a photographer. She, in fact, had planned to be a doctor. Uh, and uh, she had seen doctors on late night shifts uh, and uh, but uh, was looking at keeping a profession like that. But little did she realize photography and particularly press photography uh, could be a far tougher task as far as working hours are concerned. One day spills to another and you never know. But she also went through a very difficult time after she decided to retire. And uh, looking back, she realized that uh, there is no value of her work. In fact, let me read a quote that uh, she had given in the year 2005, which was uh, close to the publishing of this book, where she says, it was after 50 years of having taken these pictures that I started to see the value of my work. I was only earning a living. 
People say that I would be remembered for it, but remembered by whom? In a country where a great man like Gandhiji has been forgotten as well. I couldn't care less. All I want for people today, especially the young, to see what it was living in those days. So it was at the age of 57 when she decided to quit. No one she felt was interested in her photographs any longer and for 23 years after she quit, all of her negatives just lay in a box, a treasure that remained locked for all these decades. She also came at a very emotive point of her life where she decided that there is no use of these negatives in her life anymore. She burned some of her other prints and negatives through some of her movie footage that she had as well. But one day, many, many years later, it was a Delhi-based photographer who noticed the name of a woman among a list of men in the PIB records, in the Press Information Bureau records. And that's when he inquired about her and then started looking for her. Indeed, the works of Homai Vyarwala that are beautifully preserved in this book is very closely attached to the history of our country here as well. And uh, at a week of concluding Women's Day celebrations, like so many of us say that it's not just about one week or it's not just about one particular day, it's about the continuous journey. And Homai Vyarwala's journey will continue to inspire women across the world.